This video is brought to you by Aplake. Aplake is a print on demand service for your favorite e-commerce stores. If you use Shopify like me, simply find the free Aplake app, install it, and start selling your merch in minutes. Take your brand to the next level with Aplake's private labeling service that works with print on demand. This is the easiest way to start a brand that stands out going into 2023, and it's free, so why not try it? Link in the description below. Here's how to design a vintage movie poster in Adobe Photoshop. And I'm going to add a little bit of a twist to this one. I wanted this vintage poster to include Iron Man. He's one of my favorite Marvel characters, if you guys didn't know that already, besides Wolverine. That's why they're in the background. And, you know, maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't. And if you didn't, it's okay. It's not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> My goal is by the time you're done watching this tutorial, you guys will pick up some new skills and you'll be able to design posters just like the one we're about to do right now. And I have terrible anxiety, but I'm still going to make this one badass. Let's go. So my Photoshop interface looks completely different than yours, I'm sure, because I just basically took everything on the right side and I flipped it. I put it on the left side. That's just because that's the way my eyes work. Definitely do whatever works for you though, okay? And the layout that I am using is Essentials, nothing fancy here. Is that the ice cream man? I kind of want to go get some ice cream. Forget about it, I'm on a diet. I always found that when I'm making poster designs, it's best to start off with some sort of grid. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I think what I want to do is maybe start off with some squares. Now I want this to be filled with black though, so I could just see them easier. We might change that later on, but in all honesty, I'm going to be using these shapes to hide images inside of with clipping masks, and you'll see what that looks like in a second. All right, so we have our rectangles. I'm just going to select the very top rectangle layer, which is rectangle one, copy two. We have three of them, right? So I'm going to select the very top one, hold and shift, and then just select the very bottom one. That's going to select everything in between. From here, I want to make sure that my chain on the very top is unchecked because I do not want these to scale like this. Let me show you. We don't want that. I want them to scale like this. So I can basically kind of size them and shape them how I want. All right, cool. That looks really good. And I also have my smart guides enabled, which helps me center things really fast. If you don't have those enabled, all you have to do is go up to view, show, and then check smart guides. I already have them selected on my layers palette. So I'm going to press command G to group those. And uh, maybe we could just name them boxes or I don't even know. I'm already selecting them on the layers palette, which is great because I want to group them together. I could do this two different ways. I can either press Command G, Control G if you're on a PC, or just drag them into the folder icon. And like that, they are grouped. And let's name these boxes. I don't know. Why not? And they resized on me because I accidentally pressed the wrong key. Totally fine. I'll just resize those. There we go. Now let's go ahead and on the very top, I want to type in Iron Man. And then for the text, I'm probably just gonna stick with like an Helvetica. Not that I don't like Helvetica, but I kind of want to try a different font out. I want to left align it to this box. So I'm using my smart guides for this. Let's do like a quote below it. I think I'm gonna do something from Endgame. I think he says the truth is I am Iron Man. And let's scale this down just a little bit. I don't know, maybe after is we could do like some dots. There we go, cool. Yes, and I think I'm gonna leave it that size. I don't know why I'm kind of vibing with it. Um, on the very top, I think I'm gonna add some like credits or something from the movie. I found this case right here. I'm really just looking for the credits. So let's see if we can just like kind of scale it up and just take just the credits right here. I just thought it would look cool to have those for some reason. Maybe it's a really bad idea. So I'm just gonna cut those out. I don't really care if they're that like clear to read. It's just kind of like a design thing, so. That's kind of what I'm going for. And uh, yeah, we need to get rid of the black area. So I'm going to go to blend options here and just bring that over to the right. Let's convert this to a smart object. I'm going to keep this as a placeholder for now and kind of figure out what I want to do with that section. So this is going to be like our main picture and the top ones are just going to be like kind of smaller pictures. I think I'm going to have him right there in the center snapping and uh, we can have his hand popping out of the box and everything like that. It might look really, really cool. How do I spell? his last name, Robert Downey Jr. Something like that. Maybe Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. I don't want this to be the same font weight because that kind of like clashes with other elements. So I'm gonna go to the font weight and just go regular with it, I think. Or just bold. Let's try bold. Yeah, see, I already like the format of this. So Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Iron Man, the truth is I am Iron Man. Does it matter why it's there? No. I like it, okay? <laughs> and maybe we could do the Marvel logo on the right-hand side. I don't know why, but I just think that would look really cool. And then I've found the Marvel logo on Google, and I'm just going to kind of drag it into the right corner. All right, so I scaled it down, put it in the right corner, 
and that looks really cool. So everything is lining up, as you can see, with our smart guides, and I just really love the way that looks. But I do want to take out the white on the inside, and we are just going to fill this with black. So we could do that a few different ways, but I'm going to be a little lazy about it and just add a color overlay and do something like that. That looks really, really cool. And I think I'm gonna start with this big image. So let's go to Google real quick. And since I'm not making profit off this, and this is purely for educational purposes, that is why I'm gonna to go to Google to find an image. If you were to use anything like this um, as like a print that you sell, you'd have to get permission from Marvel, and they're going to want a royalty or some sort of commission off of the sales that you make, if you even get approved, by the way. I like this one a lot because it kind of has like some of the background elements that I'm looking for. All right, so I found this snap. It might not work though. It's pretty low quality, but I am, applying a bunch of effects to this, so I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is we need to clip it to that rectangle box, which is the main box, sort of like this. I found this other photo of Iron Man flying and it looks really, really cool, so we're gonna drag him on the left box, I think, or maybe even in the middle, to be honest, yeah. So let's go ahead and um, clip him to the middle box and do something like that. I just love how that's right there. And uh, that's easier said than done, but I'm sure we can find something, maybe a different angle would be kind of cool. I like this close up of his helmet as well, so I think we're gonna use that. And then I could put this on like the left side maybe. Let's see if that's even gonna work out. It might not. But I'm almost thinking it needs to be on the right side, so let's try clipping it to the right box instead. I decided I'm just gonna keep the bottom credits because honestly, it's a vintage poster, so I think it's actually kind of fitting to be all grungy like that. What I wanna do now is kind of work on the spacing of everything and just move things down a little bit. So. There's proper alignment and proper spacing. Maybe even leave a little bit more space on purpose. But yeah, let's go ahead and import our photo now. And it's gonna be Iron Man kind of sideways, which it's gonna look like crap at first. And then we can go down to threshold, which is under your adjustments, and do something like this. Already looking kind of cool, not gonna lie. That is literally all I have to do. And then I can select the threshold thumbnail, take my magic wand, and just select the black only. <laughs> it's a lot going on, I know. Um, but now I have just the Iron Man suit, and then we could take just a rectangle. I think I want him on the right-hand side though, all the way to the right, and I want that black line to go across. Now I'm thinking it needs to be centered though. Maybe this is gonna work, I don't know. All right, so I think the line is just too long, so I just need to cut it off, and I want it to go all the way across, but I don't like the way it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pass on that. I think I'm gonna leave it as is because I kinda like how Iron Man's creating that bottom line, which is like the separation between the design and the credits on the very bottom, I liked ha I liked having it and it just looks really cool. So I think I'm gonna keep that. Onto the fun part though, I'm gonna go ahead and group all of these box elements together and let's just name these photos and this is where things get really fun. So I'm gonna go up to filter, filter gallery and we are going to apply a uh, stamp effect to them. So first off, I'm gonna turn off halftone pattern, turn on stamp could drag that above everything and this is kind of the look that I am going for so it's already kind of coming together honestly I didn't really have to do too much under our photos I want to apply a stamp effect to everything so I'm gonna go up to filter I just went and found another photo of the snap it just wasn't kind of the quality that I was looking for and although we're not actually going to print this I still need that quality in order to apply some of the effects that I want to do so we're gonna try this one out it's definitely not the most ideal photo but I think it's gonna work so Anyway, now I just wanna go up to filter, filter gallery, and then from here I apply something called a stamp effect, and this filter will literally transform the image like you'll see in a second, but uh, it's really cool. So I'm gonna turn off halftone pattern, and this is kind of the look that we wanna go for, but I will need to stack, um, I will need to stack this effect because as you can see, we're missing a lot of detail in the gauntlet kind of, and that's not really what I'm going for. And I think the reason why this gauntlet is getting lost right now is because we have a lot of highlights going on. And as you can see, they're kind of blown out. So we can actually fix this by going to filter. And uh, I don't know, let's try filter or maybe image adjustments, shadow and highlight. And let's mess with the highlights possibly. Could probably fix that a little bit. It's not gonna be perfect, but I have an idea of how we can fix it though. So I'm gonna press okay on that. Let's go back to that filter gallery effect and see if it kind of fixed that issue that we were having. It's a little better, it's definitely not fixed, but already we're getting a lot of detail in the face. It depends on how much contrast you're trying to add, you know, so that's kind of up to you, but uh, I don't want it to be like kind of blown out. So what I think I need to do actually is duplicate this photo. We're gonna have to stack these effects on top of one another. So first off, I'm gonna focus on the face. So go back to filter gallery and just play with the levels until we get the face exactly the way we want. 
I like the way this looks, so I'm gonna press OK. Now let's hide it, and now let's focus on the gauntlet only, because I'm trying to bring out all that detail, and I don't wanna be concerned about the face because we can't get everything perfect in one go. All right, so now I have both layers, and now what I'm gonna do is turn on the other layer. Let's add a layer mask, and then from here I wanna to go to a soft round brush, and then let's change the blend mode to dissolve, and we could just kind of paint that other side back in. Look at that, guys. How cool is this? And um, we might even add some stars right here. I found this light ray I'm gonna try to use. I'm just gonna paste it on top of everything, and I think I'm gonna use this for his gauntlet to add a little bit more detail back into that area. So I'm gonna go up to filter. Let's go camera raw filter, or it's not camera raw filter, sorry. Uh, let's go, uh, can I speak English? The filter gallery and add stamp again. That's what I meant to say. And we're gonna do something like this. We wanna kinda copy the same exact effect. And I just wanna select the white in this or even delete the black, it's really up to you. And what we can do now is kinda drag these into place. So I have three of them and let's duplicate it one more time and maybe make this one slightly smaller. So yeah, we, we brought a little bit more detail back into the gauntlet with those little light flares that we added and I still have the other photos to work on. So I'm gonna go to the boxes now and just apply that same exact stamped effect, stamp effect, sorry, that we applied before. You can always mess with the light and dark values in order to kind of uh, figure out what part you wanna show more of, I guess you can say. I wanna focus on the background color real quick because I wanna add a sort of like a bone color, almost like a creamish color. It's kinda of hard to explain, but it's gonna look something like this, maybe more towards the brown hues. As soon as we change the background color, you might've noticed that the white on the photos are not blending properly now, but that's an easy fix. All we have to do is go to our group that we made earlier, which is photos that has all of our photos in it and change the blend mode to multiply. And just like that, it's fixed. One thing that I thought would look really, really cool is adding white under the photo layer. That way we can kind of pop out some of the details, like let's say of his eyes, check that out. Sort of like that, and uh, basically just do it to any part that you think needs it. Now it's time to grab some texture. So I'm gonna go to this website called Texture Fabric, and I love this website so much. If you guys wanna go to it, it's just Texture Fabric spelled with a K, and I found this texture on it already, and I just wanna copy that and paste it above poster, and we just wanna resize that so it covers everything, and then we just simply change the blend mode of this to, let's say, screen. I wanna duplicate the texture once because I want to apply a levels adjustment to this to sort of bring out some of the details, so I'm just gonna press Command L on my keyboard, and that will bring up levels, and then from here, I could just kind of mess with the adjustments of this uh, input level section, and what that's doing is it's allowing me to mess with the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. As you can see, we're already getting a really nice look. We can even invert the second copy that we made by duplicating that main copy and change the blend mode to something else, and you get some really cool effects like this. If you zoom out, you can already see kind of what we're doing, right? And it just looks so cool. I love this style of editing. That is pretty much it for this one, guys. That's how I would approach designing a vintage poster, whether it's for Marvel characters or maybe a band that you are in, whatever it may be. That was a really long one and I struggled so hard because I have anxiety today and I have a hard time explaining this stuff sometimes. But let me know what you guys thought about this tutorial in the comment section below. And if you guys want to learn how I made $10,000 in just two days selling one t-shirt design on TikTok, you definitely want to click this video right here.